Welcome to our next edition of our Kingdom Conversations. And what Pastor Sutton and I are going to do for the next few weeks, as we, now we've begun the Advent season, we want to look through uh, the birth accounts of Matthew, uh, Luke, and John. Uh, you may know that uh, Mark doesn't have any birth narrative about Jesus. Mark's one of those, let's get right to it. And so he hops right into the uh, uh, center of Jesus' ministry. But we're going to look at uh, uh, each of the other three uh, uh, birth narratives here in, in the next couple of weeks. So uh, the first one is, and uh, Pastor Sutton and I talked about this a little bit, when we talk about the birth narrative in Matthew, we normally read verses 18 through 25, and we skip over that, that laundry list of, of names on, on the beginning. Uh, maybe that's not that great of an idea, but uh, let's talk about this a little bit, uh, Pastor Sutton. What, um, what verse of this Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, or start at the beginning, uh, chapter 1, um, what verses speak to you? Yeah, I would highlight uh, verse five and, and sort of I appreciate what you said, the laundry list. You know, I think it's a laundry list to us because it just seems like a bunch of names um, and we might just say that's a good place to skim ahead. But uh, I'd, I'd point out what speaks to me, verse five, uh, and Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab, Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth and Obed, the father of Jesse. Uh, and those names in particular, some of them stand out, obviously, from the Old Testament um, as particularly important. Uh, I'm always struck by Ruth. Uh, Ruth is a Moabite. Uh, and here she is in the genealogy of a bunch of Israelites, uh, of Israel's Messiah. And this Moabite, who's a foreigner, uh, grafted into the, the salvation history of Jesus. Um, and that's not something we should just skip over and say, oh, yeah, 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 that's that's a huge deal um, back then, but the, the implications today are profound. Yeah, that is interesting that clearly from the beginning, this Jesus, although he came to the uh, Israelites or to the Jews, this Jesus is the savior of the nations. Yeah. And there's I, this, this tension that's always in, in existence in the, in the gospels of, like you said, it's Israel's savior, but not only Israel's savior, but the savior of the nations. And, and you can't deny either one of those those two ends of the tension. Yeah. For me, the, uh, the verse that speaks to me, and I said something about this in uh, the last sermon, this is from Matthew 1, verse 20. Uh, but as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord, an angel of Yahweh, all these angels showing up, appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for what's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And uh, you know, in, in, in so many of these accounts, it's this fearlessness. And, you know, these days people are peddling fear. Uh, you turn on the news, no matter what stripe you're listening to, uh, go online. You have to worry about this, worry about that. Um, uh, the, the vaccines, oh, we're worried we're not going to have a vaccine. Now, oh, now we're worried who's going to get the vaccine. Uh, or we're worried uh, uh, what's in the vaccine. And, we're running around so scared, and not that there aren't issues, but Jesus intrudes not only into the world, but he intrudes into our world. Mm. And the message for us is, don't be afraid. I, I've got you. Uh, I've got this. And I, I think this is your language sometimes, uh, Pastor Son. This may surprise us, but it hasn't taken God by surprise. And, and so... Our Christmases are going to be about as goofy as our Thanksgivings were, I think. And uh, But into the midst of that, we have to hear this, don't be afraid. God is drawing near to save. So that was the verse that uh, really speaks uh, to me. And what's, what's neat about that, I hadn't thought about this till you just started uh, rhapsodizing on it a little bit. but Not rambling, rhapsodizing. No, 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 right? not rambling, rhapsodizing. It was, it was beautiful, pure poetry. Uh, but what, what do we have in common with Joseph? Well, we're prone to fear, you know? And it just, it's kind of a, a neat thing of how different our life is compared to back then. But there are certain similarities. And the propensity to fear is something you can see it in Abraham. You can see it in Adam and Eve. Um, you can see it in Joseph. And you can see it today. And 
um, the kind of the permanently relevant truth of God speaking into our fear. Yeah, yeah, good. How about, uh, uh, you know, this is pretty familiar to people. Is there something you would say is, is underappreciated or that we ought to look at a little more carefully? Yeah, I, I, I share this in Bible study rather frequently when people ask me about genealogies and so forth. And I just, it, it can be hard, but just to go slowly through the genealogy and just say, this is a real person. And this is a real person that God saw fit to include in scripture. And I always just try to turn it on people a little bit and say, just imagine that God saw fit to put your name in scripture. Wouldn't you want people to, to say, wow, something's up there, you know, and not, 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 not putting focus on the self, but just to say, this is a real person, uh, a real part of God's salvation history. And that matters. Yeah. And uh, you think about that they're going to still be saying names like Rehoboam and Jehoshaphat and Uzziah long after people have no idea who Babe Ruth is. Yeah. And, you know, so yeah, this, this is significant to, you know, to think, what if your name was, oh wait, my name is in here. Yeah. Or at the very name. least to, uh, to marvel at the fact that someone would be named a uh, Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I know the David that's in here is not me. I know it's another uh, David. He's got good um, days and bad days. But. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the thing that I think is, oh, I, I, you know, as you were talking about that, I happened to listen to a book. You got me into listening to books more than uh, just reading them. And I think you're going to work on um, how, how uh, God became king mm, yep. um, by what's his name, N.T. Wright. So I was listening to it and whatever British guy he had reading it read that whole list. And it was interesting. It was really striking. It was almost, it was almost beautiful and melodic to hear these voices and, and to think about the kingdom of God being released through them. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you on the name. Uh, the one for me is uh, verse 22. And, you know, this is the drum that Matthew's going to beat a lot anyways. He says, all this took, took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Uh, Behold, the virgin will conceive, bear a son, and he'll call his name Emmanuel. You know, I, I think we have to appreciate how all of this meshes with all that God had been doing through the ages, mm. and that God had a plan. Uh, there were times it looked like everything was out of control, and it wasn't working, and where in the world is God? But no, God had a plan, and he was working it out at just the right time. Like the prophet said, Jesus came. And, and to have some comfort for us, too, that God's going to keep all those words to us at just the right time. And the powerful thing in that is just putting yourself back in, in, in that time. You can imagine people saying, well, God, where are you in that moment? You know, and, and we look at this from our perspective and we say, oh, well, just just be patient. You know, God's at work. And, and here we are today saying, God, where are you? And I think the same advice is true. Just be patient. God's at work. I was reading in, I think it's uh, Second Peter, where it says, God is not slow as some mm. count slowness. Yep. Um, yep. But he sure does seem like he's slow to us sometimes. How about, uh, we're talking about uh, Christmas narratives. Have you got a, a Christmas song or a Christmas hymn or a Christmas carol you like? This is actually not a Christmas a hymn, but it is uh, one that fits in, I think, just to the the genealogy that I was speaking about, uh, chief of sinners though I be. And uh, just a powerful, obviously taking that from uh, Paul's words in scripture, uh, but just the idea that, that God would, would put sinners in the genealogy of Jesus. And uh, if, if God will do that and can do that, uh, God will also bring sinners like you and me uh, into the righteousness of Christ and the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great hymn. I, I just don't want to hear you singing at Chief of Sinners Though I Be, Dave Davis is Worse Than Me. <laughs> Not that one. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, this is an old stand standby. Uh, o come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and to think that's, actually, technically, that's not a Christmas song. That's an Advent uh, song or Advent hymn. But uh, I think that continues to be our yearning. 
Emmanuel, you know, come be with us again like you uh, were in Christ. Come be with us now and rescue us. Mm. So, uh, so these are some thoughts. Uh, we're going to work through the next two uh, birth narratives in the next videos, Kingdom Conversation. Uh, we hope that you find this interesting and helpful as you get ready for uh, Christmas. Uh, Pastor Sutton, would you offer up a word of prayer? Sure, let's pray. Uh, gracious God, we do marvel uh, at your word, and not only your word, but your work, and that you would uh, use ordinary people, uh, people in the genealogy of Jesus, uh, to fulfill the word spoken through the prophets, to send us a Savior. And the Lord, as we uh, slow down and reflect on that, we also reflect on the fact that you would take us, ordinary people, uh, sinners though we are, uh, that you would graft us into that uh, body of Christ and into your kingdom. Uh, so Lord, be with us during this Advent preparation as we dwell on your word and think about uh, your great love for us in Jesus. Uh, we pray this all in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.